Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am sharing a really fun DIY that I made using some leather that I found at Hobby Lobby. I'll be sharing the whole process from start to finish, so make sure you stick around. It's gonna be a fun video. Also, if you are not yet following me on Instagram, you can head on over and find me at Valerie Aguirre. So there are a couple different ways that you can make your frame for this DIY, and I just did a little custom frame because I was looking for a specific size and that was kind of customized to fit right in our hallway. So, so I just took custom measurements of what I needed. So I did 13 and a half width, that's across, and then 27 inches down. I just mark a straight line and then use my favorite miter saw. I will link that one below and cut them all down to size. I will also use the wood that I linked below. I actually found these in the garden section at Home Depot. They're just little stakes actually for the garden, but they were perfect for frame. So once I got the frame all ready and kind of lined up how I wanted, I just put a couple um, like longer finishing nails right in the corners. And then I actually went ahead and painted the frame in like a black matte spray painted color. So this is the leather that I found at Hobby Lobby. They sell it in like a bag and I believe it was about $12.99 for this big piece of suede leather. Um, and it's kind of, it almost looks a little bit green in the package, but uh, it came out in natural light, a little bit more brown, which is fine. So I ended up just drawing lines um, and cutting out strips of this leather. If you have some type of fabric cutter or rotary cutter, those will definitely shortcut the cutting process, but the scissors work well too. I didn't measure the strips out. I just kind of laid the frame on the fabric and made sure that the fabric was going to allow enough to kind of wrap up around. So don't forget to allow for wrapping up the sides. You don't want to cut it too short. Um, you will definitely be cutting all the excess after the project is done rather than before. So to see if I had enough, I would just lay the strips kind of across the top of the frame and once I had enough to cover the whole frame, um, I stopped cutting. And then I also did the same thing going across. So you also need your leather that's going to be going across. So I just took the same length as going down and then I actually just cut it in half. Um, depending on your size of the frame, um, yours might be a little bit different, but this is just uh, what I found was easiest to just cut it right in half. And if you don't want to make a custom frame, there are some other options as well. You can always use an old canvas or something you can find at Goodwill or a thrift store. They always have a ton of canvas like that and it's really easy to just cover them and remake them. So this was the frame after I painted it black. I just went over it really quick with some black matte spray paint and I really, really like how it just kind of made that frame pop, especially with the brown leather. I really, really like this combination. So I laid the long strips going down the frame and then stapled them to the top part only. And actually after I did this, I kind of did shift them over because I wanted that frame to show a little bit more. So they're really easy to remove. If you make a mistake or they're a little crooked, you can always just pop them back out and then staple them back in. And I will link my um, staple gun that I have. I have had the staple gun for years and I love it. It's so perfect for projects like this and easy things around the house. It's a really, really great staple gun. So this art piece actually was a little bit inspired by a former art piece that I did. If you guys remember the string art, it was like a crate and barrel dupe, um, very similar to this. I will link it up top. And yeah, this one is a little bit easier because you don't have all the strings to work with, but the process of this one is pretty easy. I did stick to kind of a standard um, over under weaving pattern. And if you can see, I kind of kept it a little bit more, I'm waiting for the camera to focus. I kind of kept it a little bit more in the center because I wanted that black frame to kind of pop and show through. 
So I would just run the leather strips kind of over and under, very basic weaving um, in that pattern continually through the whole um, piece. And towards the end, I was gonna wrap those side pieces right around the side frame. So the only thing that should be connected really to the frame is those top pieces and then you go and staple everything like afterwards. And what I like about not, you know, stapling anything down right away is that once you get to the bottom, you can adjust things, you can remove them or add them if you want them a little bit tighter weave or a little bit looser weave. Um, it's easiest to not staple anything down other than those top pieces um, right at the beginning. Also another tip, if you can see some color variation, so there's two strips or three strips now um, that are a little bit lighter, so I would flip them over to the back side just kind of randomly, just to kind of break up that color. Um, and it gave a little bit of color variation and a little bit more texture because it has um, kind of some like little marks on the back, so I really like that. So this was the very back of the piece and once I kind of got everything settled and shifted exactly how I wanted it, I was able to staple the opposite end of the top. So I stapled the top and the bottom and then got everything in place for the sides and then once the sides were ready to be tightened, I wrapped those up the side of the frame and stapled those down with the staple gun. And if the staples do kind of pop up a little bit, you can always hammer them in um, at the very end. I definitely did that to tighten everything up. So for the leather, you kind of want to pull it so that it is a little bit tighter. Um, I'd rather have it a little bit tighter than on the saggy side, if that makes sense. Uh, you definitely want it to kind of bounce back just a little bit. Then I flipped it over to the opposite side and stapled that last part in. Once I got everything stapled, I was able to kind of cut the excess off. You don't have to do this. I kind of find that it just cleans up the back a little bit, makes it look a little bit more polished. So I cut all of the excess leather and it was ready to go. I did tighten all those staples by using a hammer just to kind of secure everything, make sure that they're in there really good, and this really kind of seals it all. And here it is all done. I kind of have it setting in the hallway up against the wall. Um, I did hang it, but I'm kind of waiting for a reveal because I am working on kind of sprucing up my hallway right now. So that will be a future video for you guys, but I didn't want to um, spoil that video yet. So this is kind of a little glimpse into uh, where it's gonna go and what it's going to be kind of styled with. I love how a simple DIY piece like this can bring so much to a hallway or a space with just plain white walls. It can bring warmth and texture and interest. There's just so much to love about a piece like this. And it's so easy to do. I hope this video gave you a little bit of inspiration to try a new DIY. And with that, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.